Hello. Yeah, you are audible. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can start. So, so hello, good afternoon, one and all present here. This is Shraddha Pangam, and I, along with Rohit Dandamodi, have worked on the research paper for Inset 2020. The basis for this paper is groundwater level pattern predictions, forecast, and assessment of uncertainty using methods such as variant regression and ARIMA models. We have made use of a case study in the region of Telangana. As we proceed with our presentation, I will give you a brief introduction and an insight into the motivation behind this paper. We will also learn more about the methodologies used as well as discussing about the results we have gotten. Um, next slide. So this is the introduction to our research paper. Since water is a natural resource that covers around 70% of our planet, it is easy for us to assume that the resource is available in abundance. However, this is definitely not the case. Fresh water in its usable form is actually available in in much lesser quantities. Most of the water available to us is found in the frozen form or is way too salty for us to use in our daily lives. As a result, water scarcity has become a major problem even in the 21st century. It is a pathetic situation wherein human beings are deprived of basic amenities like water. Looking at the current state of things, the situation is only bound to get much worse. Some sources say that by the year 2025, two-thirds of the world's population is likely to face water shortage. This in turn draws our attention towards groundwater reserves. in order to satisfy our needs the consumption rate of groundwater reserves exceeds the rate at which it is being replenished leading to a depletion of groundwater reserves there is need for us to monitor uh, groundwater systems for agricultural industrial and other purposes and to ensure that it is not being exploited beyond a certain threshold i know you can come here but i mean uh... sorry sir monitoring of groundwater systems no. is it's actually no uh, yeah yeah no. monitoring of these systems is not an easy task as they are highly heterogeneous in nature there are varied types sizes etc and the monitoring is needed uh, so we can understand environmental phenomena better uh, can i get the next slide so for developing and maintaining our natural resources we should carefully examine environmental time series In our research paper, we see how groundwater level patterns in a given region are analyzed, predicted, and the degree of uncertainty is assessed. We make use of self-organizing maps and ARIMA to do so. The SOM ARIMA is a hybrid between SOM and the autoregressive integrated moving average, about which we will learn later on in the presentation. Next slide. So this is the case study that we have chosen. Telangana is a South Indian state characterized by its dry and hot climate. It is also a semi-arid zone. There are two rivers mainly flowing in our state, and it is uh, largely dependent on rainfall for its irrigation facilities. Due to a lack of proper maintenance, most of the tanks and our basins have become dysfunctional. There is a lot of pressure on groundwater res- resources. The rainfall is erratic, and its distribution is uneven in various parts of the state. by monitoring a groundwater system network we get uh, data about these groundwater systems with a fairly certain degree of accuracy keeping in mind the different hydrogeological environments in the area to the left of this slide we can see uh, we can see a map based on the depth needed to reach groundwater level in the state it's a fairly recent map from the year 2019 now my co-author rohit will continue the presentation and tell you more about the methodologies we have used Uh, coming to the methodology, uh, we have taken the groundwater data for the last uh, decade, from the years two thousand seven to twenty seventeen, from the Ministry of Water Resources uh, official website for the state of Telangana. What we have done is uh, a lot of uh, data pre-processing went to it, 
to make the data clean and uh, without any errors. Later on, we used a self-organizing map to uh, visualize the patterns in the data and what categories it is divided into. And uh, later on, we even uh, used ERIMA model to fit the data and uh, predict it over the next few years. As you can see in the meteorology, uh, we have uh, uh, used both SOM and ARIMA together to match and uh, match the best outcome needed. Uh, as I told, we used SOMs. Uh, SOMs are basically 2D uh, uh, visual representations of the data which, which we have uh, uh, used so far and uh, how they are divided into different categories. Uh, in present scenario, we took four categories uh, that are critical, uh, safe, and uh, semi-safe and semi-arid zones, which basically tell the water, groundwater level in that region. And uh, then we went into the regression analysis part of the data, uh, which is basically comparing two parameters and uh, finding a relationship between them. Here, uh, in this case, we are uh, considering both uh, groundwater and time and how groundwater is affected over the period of time and how they both are related. Uh, moving forward, we even uh, uh, extended it to the ARIMA model as the data which we are using is time series based. Uh, so ARIMA model uh, proved to be a very uh, accurate model to uh, fit the data in. Coming to the results, uh, the data that we took had uh, four major parameters. Uh, that is pre-monsoon, monsoon, post-monsoon post Rabi and post-monsoon Kharif. Uh, the reason for taking this is because uh, the majority of groundwater consumption is uh, by agriculture uh, agriculture industries. So, Rabi and Karif seasons are uh, very much important during analysis. And as you can see, each parameter has uh, different uh, uh, categories, uh, mean, standard deviation, minimum, and different quartiles. Uh, if you can see the pre-monsoon area, it has the most uh, groundwater level. To reach uh, to reach the water because uh, this is before rainfall season. During the monsoon season, it decreases, and post monsoon, it even decreases further. If you go to the quartile areas, uh, as you can see, if you take 25% of the data set that we took, the groundwater levels are pretty high because they're easily reachable. 5.02, these are uh, pretty high. If you take, as we keep on taking more data, 50% and 75%, we can see that. Uh, the groundwater level is going down. This gives an gives uh, as a, an in, insight on how the groundwater level is even depleting with the same rainfall over the years, and uh, how how much important it is for us to uh, uh, manage it properly. Later on, uh, the same can be seen using the self-organizing maps here, where you can see the four different types of self-organizing maps in the pre-monsoon season. If you can see the Red zone is uh, the most higher here than in any other uh, map. That's because it's before monsoon season and uh, it's the most dominating. Uh, in the monsoon season, you can see that the red zone is pretty negligible because of uh, plenty rainfall. Moving on, uh, later on, uh, we used the ARIMA model to fit the data because uh, uh, the data that we had is the the mean was pretty stationary for all the parameters, and it is a time series bound data. So we uh, found that ARIMA model is uh, fairly accurate and gives uh, decent results. Uh, so we have taken around 50% of the data set and uh, trained the ARIMA model on it. And later on, we used the rest 50% to test it against the uh, predicted models. And the total mean square error that we got is uh, around 2.165. Uh, even though these are not uh, optimal levels, this gives, an, gives us an insight on uh, how ARIMA model can be used and where it is applicable. And uh, later on, uh, the conclusion that we got is that uh, uh, the SOM ARIMA hybrid model gives us a very easy and uh, more deep understanding of the data that we have, and it gives us a clear insight on uh, how the data is categorized and how it can be used. And uh, the only, if you use only regression analysis, uh, we won't get the uh, same accuracy because uh, it, there can be very, uh, uh, there can be different outliers and fluctuations in the data set. Uh, what, what more we can do, uh, what more we found is that uh, the groundwater levels uh, tend uh, 
can be used for future planning uh, for areas where the, it, it is critical when the groundwater level is high yeah. uh, you can use the you can use this model and this research in future to uh, go for a sustainable development thank you yeah that's it sir. yeah very good presentation rohit yeah, and uh, with your partner shraddha shraddha okay uh, you said that the data set is being collected till yes, 2017 uh why can't you go till 2019 we can sir actually but uh, any particular yeah, sir, reason because uh, the b- till 2017 the government took into different categories sir tube wells bore wells and uh, uh, ground water resources after that the pattern got changed more advanced techniques are used sir now yeah okay. so data preprocessing was different for that mm-hmm. yes sir. yeah definitely it is uh, one of the uh, very good open issues in correct scenario ground water level a lot of research is going in this direction yes sir yeah that will definitely help the society in future hmm? yes sir okay very good presentation rohit thank you sir thank you sir oh.